Well, hello, everybody. Happy Friday and welcome to the live stream. Today, we are talking about jobs. We're talking about getting hired in the creative industry right now. We're, I mean, specifically, we're probably going to be talking about a lot of UI design, UX design, web design, because that's the kind of stuff that I do. But I feel like anything we talk about today goes towards all the things happening in the creative industry. Hey, if you're out there, let me know what's going on. We got Terabu Art Army in the house saying hello. Uh, if you are watching <clears throat> on Facebook, on YouTube, on Twitch, on wherever else, let me know. I uh, would love to chat back with you and answer any of the questions you have. That's what we're going to do today. We're going to answer questions. We're actually going to take a deep dive and look at some portfolio sites and also some job board sites. And then the idea is, let's see if we can bring together a pretty clear picture of what people are looking for, what companies are looking for. We'll do some freelance kind of like, uh, you know, uh, assessments as well. What are people looking for in freelance designers? in these job descriptions and we'll learn how to read job descriptions a little bit better uh, and we'll try to pair together these job descriptions and these portfolios are is is it realistic what companies are asking for right now is it weird when they say we're looking for three to five years of experience for a junior designer is that weird let me just i'll just summary cheat code spoiler yeah that's really weird no no junior designer should have five years of experience that's stupid that's dumb i'm just gonna come out and put my cards on the table so um so we are gonna be talking about all of that stuff and uh yeah and and okay we might as well just dig in we got who else chai is in the chat oscar's in the chat miguel's in the chat shakes what's up everybody how's everybody doing chaya says wages are lower uh it's more competitive it is more competitive i agree with you there um, and Daniel Jimenez says, it's my first time here. Nice to meet you. Uh, you're from Spain. I was just in Spain. I was in Barcelona at a conference. So that's pretty awesome. I do think that the UI design uh, industry is a good place to be right now. So yes, to kind of pair those comments together. Is it competitive? Yes, absolutely. Is it competitive? Is it still a good place to be? Absolutely. Because even in the dive of the economy, the truth is that companies are going to continue to need to put out digital products. They're going to continue to be startups and entrepreneurs and, and the need for freelancers, contract work, full-time work, all that kind of stuff. So I think UI design is a great place to be if you want to get into the job market right now. If you are transitioning from some or other area of design, maybe graphic design is drying up for you. Maybe it's harder to get print design jobs nowadays. Maybe you're not so into logo design anymore. You want to come over into the UI UX space. It's a great time to do that. Hey, quick shameless plug. I'm just going to be really honest. It is a shameless plug. I'm launching my new 30-day UI designer program. It's an immersive 30-day program. It's not a course. It is a program. It is 30 days of hands-on work. Uh, and if you are interested, it has just opened up for early backers. Uh, I, the first 100 backers get all sorts of extra Kickstarter deals. And 60 of those seats are already taken. So uh, I just launched this last Friday. And uh, if you want to get in on it, you get the discount of 50% off price, plus all the early backer goodies. Consider doing that because it's a program like this that could help you transition from some other area of design, get hands-on, build a portfolio, have everything you need to start applying. So definitely consider checking that out. Let's dive right in and let's talk about some job descriptions, shall we? I'm going to look at a couple of sites today. Uh, we're going to take a look at Behance, uh, the new and awesome Contra that's out, the always amazing independent dribble and then we're even going to jump over here to well found and then guess what at the end of the day uh, we might even play a little wordle together because i'm having fun playing wordle on my live streams with all of you guys uh okay so let's take a look first because i have uh behance open and i have the uh like actual job board and i have some portfolios open so why don't we open up i'm specifically searching for ui and ux design why don't we open it up and try to find i don't i'm not looking for one with multiple owners i want to see a project that has one person, like for instance, uh, this one by Katunik Katrina. Let's open that one up, shall we? And why don't we come over here for a full-time job? Because what can we figure out about Katunik really quickly? That's a hard name for me to say. Um, Dubai, United uh, Arab Emeritus, looking for freelance and full-time is what this person says they're looking for okay fantastic so let's just be fair we'll jump over to full-time okay and i'm gonna look up uh ui and ux 
here inside of Behance. And again, I am specifically pairing the Behance job board with a Behance portfolio. Let's see if things, th these things will match up because as we're doing this little experiment, uh, what we might actually see as well is what are some things we should be looking for in these job descriptions? What are some things that we could do in our portfolio pieces that would help satisfy those requirements? All right, let's jump back into it. So, okay, we got some good examples here. Here's like, uh, you know, some product designer, UI UX designer, uh, senior graphics UI UX. Let's go for something like middle senior UI UX designer, senior, senior. Let's just go this one. X billiards. We're hiring UI UX designer. It doesn't say senior, doesn't say junior. It just says product designer or UI UX designer. Okay. So let's kind of assess this, this job description here briefly, shall we? It's an innovative team. So again, a couple of insights when you're reading these job descriptions, what are the things that you should be kind of tuning into. It says, join an innovative team. That means you're not the first hire. You're probably not the second hire. You 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 might be the third hire or more. That means they have more like designers on board, most likely, unless they're contributing team to the development team, stakeholders, so on and so forth. But usually people don't do that. Okay. Um, let's see, visually appealing user experiences. So I, they are mixing the language of UI and UX design together. That's visual and that's UX, right? So they're saying, Hey, go ahead and do that. Uh, you want to collaborate. Now this is a huge thing. The other week we did hard and soft skills. And those are one, this is one of those things where people go like, I can collaborate. I'm good at collaboration, but are you really, are you good at Receiving feedback, making changes based on that feedback, asking questions, listening and not speaking first, because that's about collaboration. Are you good at making compromises even when you feel like your solution is the correct one? Ah, this is how we have to start actually assessing our own soft skills, okay? Uh, Cross-functional teams, intuitive designs, user flows, yada, yada, yada. Let's talk about responsibilities, okay? User interfaces that prioritize some UX and functionality, like it, okay? So this is a great example of somebody who is, they are posting, they're looking for a UI UX designer, and sure enough, the responsibilities are claiming an all-arounder. They're looking for somebody that can do all of it. If that's you, you'd be a good fit. If you suck at UX, okay, and you just like to make pretty things, don't even spend your time applying for this. They, they're saying right here that you're going to need to make them functional. They're going to have to work really well. They don't have a dedicated UX team, most likely. They have a Avengers team of all-arounders, okay? Um, here's another one of those soft skills. Communicate. Here's one that a lot of designers don't like. Maintain. Not just create, but maintain, okay? So let's talk about qualifications, bachelor's degree, minimum of two years of UI UX design experience. Now, here's what I would say to you about these minimums. Like, hey, we're looking for three to five years. We're looking for two years. This is not saying it's a junior position. So to me, it's okay that they're claiming a minimum of two years. That seems reasonable. But when they say experience, what do they mean by experience? Are are they meaning full-time experience? Doesn't say here explicitly. So with that being said, if you've gone through a boot camp, if you've been learning over the past year or two, I feel like this could work for you. Okay. Don't be, you know, scared away by this. They're going to talk about the types of tools they'd like to see the equivalence of, uh, you know, user principles. Okay. We got a kind of an understanding. I feel like I'm looking for some key things there. Let's go back to, uh, Katunix, uh, Behance profile thing here or, or project. And let's see what we got going. Okay. It's a web app design an event finder. She's saying UI and UX. See that right there. Okay. And it is recent. We like to see this. Now, when you're building your portfolio, you should have relevant work. You should have your best work and you should have recent work. Don't put old stuff from business cards that you designed five years ago if you're looking to be a UI UX designer, right? Are you with me? Okay, you need re relevant stuff, the type of stuff you want to do, want to get hired for, love to do, and it has to be fairly recent, okay? Otherwise, people are gonna go, is this really the person for me? Okay, we got some beautiful visuals at the top, which is great. Now, if, if there is substance beneath this, then I'm on board, okay? But if all it's gonna be is a bunch of fluff, then... Okay, no good, but definitely a beautiful visual at the top. Notice this presentation, okay? It is gorgeous. It's not just that he or she did not just slap in the photo of the project and go, we're all done. It already feels highly branded, okay? So when this person, this job description is asking for somebody who can design things that are beautiful, but also functional and serve a purpose, you're kind of demonstrating that with your portfolio and how you put it together, aren't you? You're saying my portfolio, the whole point of it is to showcase my process, my value, what I do, you know, how I can be a contributor to the team, but it needs to be presented beautifully. So can you do both, 
right? Okay. And here's another little tip for all of you out there. They're like, yeah, but I'm, I got my own website. It's a WordPress template. Ditch it. Get away from it. If technology is the thing holding you back and that's your excuse for not being able to design functional and beautiful portfolio pieces or case studies, ditch the technology. That's why I suggest you move over to like Behance or Dribble or Contra or something like that because then you can just export these beautiful designs like these frames, stitch them all together like this in Behance and let it do the talking. You're not battling the technology. Okay, that's my, I'm gonna get off my soapbox on that. Beautiful project overview. Okay, now let's talk about presentation. We got mixed media here. We got some nice branding stuff. Okay, love it. Problems and solutions, very UI and UX focused, right? And again, all of this is branded. It looks beautiful, okay? Didn't just slap it in here. We're putting some, we're, we're matching the branding of the project, but we're showing gorgeous work. I'm gonna need to start seeing though a little bit more substance out of Katunik here. Okay, here we go, product timeline. It's a beautified version of a product timeline. Love that. We have a little bit of a user persona that is also matched and branding and looks beautiful. Love it. User flows. Let's go, dude. This is a good portfolio piece. This is a good case study. Here's my bone that I have to pick with case studies nowadays is their freaking snooze fests. They are absolutely god awful boring. They are like the longest chapter novel book ever where I'm just like, give me the too long, don't read. But if you can visually keep me interested, I have a little bit more interest. I might stick around and read more of it. But if you can get quickly through the story arc of problem, solution, value that you bring, I'm even more engaged, okay? So if I'm a hiring manager, I'm engaged right now, right? If I'm, if I'm the person who's posting this and I open up this portfolio piece and I see what I'm seeing right now, I'm liking it. I'm a big fan. They took the time and made some beautiful multimedia stuff. This is a great way to demonstrate going from low fidelity to how have I not thought of this? Oh gosh, this is great. Put the wireframe, place it though, visually appealing, right? And then look at this. We got a nice, simple little animation that exposes how the high fidelity looks on top of the low fidelity. Oh gosh, this is like... This is all the things. This is like confetti worth. Let's go. Like this is really, really compelling stuff. I'm in, I'm into it. Okay, so take notes, class. This is looking really, really good. Okay, again, visual design beautiful. Showing me all the goods. You have the visual design chops. You are mocking things up in real world scenarios into uh, you know, a logo, into a nav bar, into, you know, like promotional or marketing materials. We like to see this, right? Listen, just because you're like, I'm a UX designer, I'm a UI designer, I, I design the interface, doesn't mean you stop there, right? Try your hand at impressing with a little bit more. Here's the crazy thing. It feels like leaving money on the table. If you've done the work to create a color palette, create a structure, build an interface, and you go, Bleh, here's the interface. You're leaving money on the table. Take that work that you've done, that visual work, that functional work, that that UX work, and then bring all the visuals and just say, I'm just going to open up something like uh, like a mock-up generator or um, you know something online. Like I'm going to find some cool templates on Figma. I'm going to slap this into a poster. I'm going to slap this into a billboard. I'm going to rework a couple things. Notice this. <laughs> Notice this. The rest of it is so impressive that this seems really impressive, but all this is is the same logo used the same color with an image and some text and and an image that we've already seen, like lots of imagery. They just slapped it into a mock-up, right? And it goes, ooh, this is impressive. It's just the same stuff. It's just an extra 10 minutes. Like, just do it. And it, it raises the level to confetti levels here. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, just be, take the time. Take the time is what I'm saying, okay? Beautiful work, gorgeous work. Uh, yep, we, we're doing some, again, gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous work. It's a really full-fledged portfolio piece, right? Um, you know, we got through a lot of that, like, problem-solving stuff, and now they're just trying to wow. This, now they're just bragging, you know what I mean? And listen, I'm on board. I love it. I'm all about it. Um, you know, amazing and unique. They're highlighting and they're kind of, they are bragging about the type of work that they did. You should. If it's really, really good, you should, okay? Um, and now we get a little bit of stuff down here. Let me see, suggesting it. Okay, good. I mean, this thing just keeps going. This is, and I'm not mad. 
that this is a long case study. I'm intrigued. I am really excited. I'm gonna give some appreciation there in Behance. Y'all should go like this and love this because it's really, really good. Um, is this person have a really, really good chance at landing this gig? Yeah. And if this gig is like, hey, we only start out at like 50 or 60K, like the person that made that portfolio should be like, sorry, that's beneath me because they've taken the time. Now, here's what's crazy. They did a ton of work. Don't get me wrong, right? And, and I think there are a lot of good designers out there. But what there's not a lot of are designers who are willing to take the time and be detail oriented and do the promotional presentational work like this. Um, that doesn't mean they're a better designer. That means they're more thoughtful and they know what's needed to actually land them freelance clients or full-time gigs. If you're not doing that, then you're going to get beat all day, every day by portfolios like this. Hey, let's answer some questions really quickly while I take a sip of coffee. All right, we got a question from Jessica Assis. It says, do you think that Behance is the right place for a case study? I feel like people on Behance only like stunning visuals instead of rationales. You know, um, I hear what you're saying. Uh, you know, you could say the very same thing about Dribble, about Behance, um, about Contra, about any of these online portfolio pieces or portfolio communities and places, whatever you want to call them. You could say the same thing. Um, here's the deal. Um, it, it does it get a little flashy at times. Sure. Do we have a problem with the quote unquote dribble shot effect? Yeah, maybe a little bit. People go too far, but you know what? The, don't worry about those people. The people that are concerned no, with nothing but flashiness and polish, they're not the ones that are going to get hired. Right. And if I'm actually hiring, which I have in the past, I have hired, I am looking for substance. If I'm hiring, which I have in the past, I've seen all the flash. I get it. I've seen all the glitz and the glam. And you might impress me, right? That portfolio piece that we just looked at would visually impress me. But if it didn't have those few crucial places in it where they showed me wireframing capabilities, user flow diagrams, low fidelity to high fidelity, I would have liked to see them talk a little bit more maybe about how they documented, communicated, and prepared for handoff. That would have, as a hiring manager, that would have made me, you know, like just go, wow, absolutely 100%, okay? So, um, you know, is it flashy? Yes, don't worry about the flashiness. You do you, you put out the substance. But I'm telling you right now, if you're putting out substance and being like an old crotchety person, like why mine has substance and theirs just has flash, shut up and add some flash to it. <laughs> That's, if you can't beat them, join them, right? So just get over it and add a little spice to your case study. And now you're the one that's in the point of power, the position of power, because now you have the substance and the flash. Okay, so I'm not afraid of those platforms, Jessica. And the reason I'm not, I love them, is like I said earlier, uh, instead of combating the technology and battling it and saying, uh, you know, I can't get my WordPress template to do X, Y, and Z. Just then get over it. Move on. Just put your stuff on Behance and use those. Nobody's going to be upset at you if you do that. Let's look for some more questions. Okay, more questions. That was a great question from Jessica. Uh, Abraham says, I was just applying for a couple of job posts an hour ago and I'm in Turkey and I want to work for agencies or companies abroad remotely. Could you also talk about remote work from another country? Absolutely. Love it, love it, love it. You'll notice this. This portfolio piece, and let's move on from Dribble here in a second, but this portfolio piece said remote okay. It should be something that you're looking for. Let's move over to Dribble, shall we? Um, I'm gonna jump over to the Dribble job board and for some reason that it didn't wanna load, there it is. And uh, you know, we can come down here and say, hey, open to remote, let's filter. Uh, and also let's filter down to web, UI, and UX, just because that's what we're doing today, okay? Um, let's see, let's see, let's see. So we got lots of opportunities, remote, okay. And and just this, all I did, the reason I did that for your question, Ibrahim, was be, Ibrahim, sorry, can't say your name, apologize, is because you can see how many options there are for remote, lots of options here. Remote is starting to be incredibly acceptable, right? And for a lot of companies, it's not just acceptable, it's preferred because they don't wanna pay for the overhead. So if you are working, you know, out of country, right? Like, or working with a company that is based in a different country, they may have certain requirements from you. Like for instance, you might need to work within a certain time zone or a band of hours, a scale of hours. Um, and that is, I, to me, that's reasonable. You can't expect to work completely remote on your own hours. If your hours are the complete opposite of 90% of the rest of the team, it's not going to work. Okay. So I've worked remote for companies and on contracts where their hours 
you know, are different than mine. And so I have to work from noon until 8 p.m. That's, hey, that happens sometimes, right? Um, so just keep that in mind. Sometimes there's requirements. There's lots of opportunities though. Let's look uh, and do what we did again here and go, we're looking for UI UX designer. This is a good one. Okay, let's talk about this one. And, uh, oh, that's interesting. Yeah, let, let's talk about this one from Membrane. I don't know who Membrane is, but they are asking for uh, somebody to join the Membrane team, okay? Um, boop, boop, boop. And here's a few things that I would recommend everybody look for inside of job descriptions, okay? Uh, it would be nice to know not just about the role responsibilities, but also if you can find anything about the company culture, which uh, look at this, this is great, right? 30 days, an idea of what you'll be doing, 60 days, a year out, uh, what they offer, what their core values are, not just benefits, right? I think a lot of times people are, there's a difference between job seekers and creatives who seek to offer value. Those are two very different people in the eyes of companies and hiring managers. Hear me out on this. There's lots of job seekers. Job seekers are the people saying, I want my first opportunity. I want a good paycheck. I'm looking for the best benefits. I'm looking for what's right for me. And that's obvious. Everybody is, right? Even the other category, which we'll talk about here in a second, the givers of value, they're doing the same thing, but they're presenting themselves in a different way. Okay. Job seekers are saying, this is all about me. Give me a job. So a job seekers portfolio will be focused on what, what they have, right? Like I like to design this way. I like to design these apps. I'm looking for these kind of benefits. I'm looking for this kind of compensation. I like to use color and typography. Look at my skills. Whereas a giver of value is saying, hey, listen, um, I do great work. I increase revenue wherever I go. I increase leads and traffic. Here's the ways and the process in which I do that. And when you are a giver of value, the immediate byproduct of that is compensation, okay? Um, and this is like kind of sales 101, business 101. For all of you freelancers out there, here's a quick freelance lesson or just sales and business lesson in general. Revenue is the byproduct of value. Um, sales is not a game where I say, I'm trying to sell you something you don't need. Sales is me showing you that you absolutely need this and the value of this thing. And that if you don't have this thing, you'll actually suffer. And the byproduct of that is people buy, right? If people aren't buying your product or buying your services, it's because you're not showing them that they have a great need, or maybe you're just searching for the wrong market and they they don't have a need. The old saying goes, what's the best, where's the best place to set up a hot dog stand? a place where people are starving, like in a, a starving market, right? On a corner where everybody's hungry. doesn't matter if you have the best hot dogs or the flashiest promotion or, you know, the best marketing. No, you just need to be on a corner where there's the hungriest people and your hot dogs could suck for all intents and purposes and they'll still sell out of your hot dogs. Why? Because you found the right market and you gave them, you realize, you showed them that they have a need. Okay. So sorry, let's put my take my sales cap off and put go back to how does that relate here? Well, when you are reading about company's core values, benefits, what they are looking for, you should be asking yourself not, hey, what's in it for me? But you should be asking yourself, hey, am I a right fit to bring value to this job description? Because if you are, if you ask yourself that question honestly, and you are a fit, you have a much better chance of landing that position. And this is the difference between a value giver and a job seeker. Job seekers will just go on LinkedIn and put fast apply to 500 jobs this week. And then not, there's, I'm just looking for anything and you're wasting your time. Even the 30 seconds it takes to fast apply, you're wasting your time because you can't offer any value to that company. And guess what? Companies aren't stupid, right? <laughs> Companies aren't stupid. They know, they understand. And even if somehow you do get through, you sneak your way into a position that you're not a good fit for, how long do you really think it's going to take before they or you figure it out and you don't want to be there or they don't want you there? Gosh, don't do it. It's a waste of time, okay? Let's get back to it. I'll get off my soapbox. Here we go. So uh, we got a good job description here. Uh, they're looking for responsibilities of, and again, these are big ones, maintaining design systems, uh, developing UI, uh, effectively, again, soft skills, communicating, design decisions, being able to give rationales, right? Concepts to stakeholders. This means you need to be able to present well. 
You need to be able to talk to senior leadership, developers, other designers, right? That means collaboration. You need to be able to follow the rules and adhere to the standards of style and typography that have been in place. So if you are a person who says, I like to create things from the ground up, they're going to want you to work within their already established system. Yet, yeah, right? If I if I bring you in to uh, hire you to hang a picture in my house and you say, I'd like to knock all these walls down first, I go, no. <laughs> No, absolutely not, right? So just make sure you understand what people are looking for. Let's look at some, uh, maybe some, let's go mobile. Let's, that, that gives us a lot of UI UX stuff here on Dribble. And just quick note on Dribble, make sure you're always clicking over to like new and noteworthy, not the people you're following and stay away from the popular people, right? Just, I always wanna look for the new and noteworthy people. Those are the people who are not getting the love. They are down, they don't already have thousands of followers on Dribble. I wanna see what they are doing, okay? Also stay away from, I don't like looking at teams. I like to look at talented in individuals like this looks like a talented individual how about this person right here how about hufaza Assad? let's look at hufaza okay all right we got a little bit of uh, okay we got some design work here it's a little messy right this is definitely what i would call like junior designer work and here's why ready immediate things you can tell that are junior designer work um misuse and abuse of drop shadows making them look like buttons when they're actually input fields uh, let's talk next. Uh, really like bad contrast between typography. Spacing is off. There's no typographic rhythm or hierarchy. Bad spacing inside the cards. We're really ugly like, um, you know, like form fields and input fields. There's just not a lot of balance or rhyme or reason to a lot of the stuff. See how clunky and busy this looks? This, like this typography is just not well thought out right tap points are probably okay might be too small if that's supposed to be a tap point you've lost your mind there's no way i'm tapping that with this ginormous thumb of mine with these these digits of mine right just kind of like mediocre immature kind of usage of like color space all that kind of stuff so just generally speaking this is what i would call junior designer work um you know my friend michael malwitz on youtube uh has a fantastic video you should i'm just gonna find it and recommend it because i really think he has quality content i know a lot of content creators are like don't, i don't want to like showcase other people's content i do because <laughs> you should be finding the best uh you know the best of the best uh where is he where is he i can't oh man i gotta find no i, I misspelled his name that's why michael malwitz yeah Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm finding it for you really quickly. Um, let's just find him in my subscriptions really quick because I need to recommend this uh, this video to you. <clears throat> okay, so I'm going to head over to Michael's channel uh, because, or Mikael, sorry, excuse me. I apologize. I say his name wrong. And I said his name wrong to him when I met him in person in Barcelona, Spain, actually. And I felt very, very embarrassed because... I felt stupid. Um, okay, he has this video right here. You should 100 million percent watch, and we shouldn't watch this ad because I don't like ads, um, but it's all about the five levels of UI skill, right? So give credit where credit's due. This is a genius way to kind of think through things. He takes you through the different skill levels, right? From level five, like the best of the best, and then he takes you all the way to level one, right and his recommendation is levels one through three are not hireable it's level four where you start becoming actually like hireable that's level three right there see the misuse of color see like these this looks very similar to what we're looking at over here right doesn't it looks very very similar these two like interfaces so if this interface that we're looking at here could move from this level three that Mikkel like recommends up to this kind of smoother level four which hopefully will load here it's a little bit cleaner a little bit more mature we would have a better time like right he'd have a much better chance of actually landing a job like this if he actually hones those skills so that being said getting hired is hard but one of the best things you can do is actually to like actually level up your skills, level up your skill set, right? If you struggle with UI design, again, shameless plug, you should consider becoming an early backer of my new program. It's not a course, it's a 30 day immersive program. Think of it like 75 hard, that fitness challenge. I can't talk fitness challenge, but this is a 30 day challenge where you're gonna learn 
everything you need to know about UI design. I highly recommend this not for experienced UI designers, but for people who are just getting into the industry or are transitioning over from some other place, some other form of creative work, graphic design, print work, web design. You need to know the specifics about designing user interfaces. And the link is down in the description, 30dayui.com. Go check it out. Uh, the first 100 people uh, or first 100 early backers get all sorts of fun Kickstarter like goodies and stuff. Uh, everybody else after that, while it's in pre-launch, will get the 50% off and then it'll jump back to the normal kind of like price. Okay, so uh, jump on that. But yeah, this kind of work is just, it's still a little bit immature. And like Mikhail would say, it needs to jump up to that level four and you need to do it quick, fast, in a hurry. So train, do whatever you need to do so that you can actually start applying for gigs like this because you're just not ready at this point. It's, it's, a hard, it's a hard reality, it's a hard truth when you hear that that type of work that we just looked at is not hireable. That's really hard to hear, but that is the reality of it, okay? It's just, uh, it's too messy. It's not going to actually um, be a good team fit, most likely, okay? Um, hey, let's take a quick little break, why don't we? And uh, let's do one of my favorite things to do on a Friday, which is just play a little bit of Wordle. You play with me, I'm gonna hide the chat. No, I'm not gonna hide the chat. You guys play with me and, and we will figure out the game together. If you don't know how it is, it is a five letter word, you get six chances. And uh, it'll tell us when we get the letters in the word, when we get them in the right position, or if they're not there at all. Oh, I like to start with a word. Maybe today I'm thinking like a word like plain, because that has two syllables in it. Maybe I like the word agile. That has an A, an I, and an E. And let's see if we can get this together on this fine Friday, okay? Uh, oh, 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 okay. Wow, we are one for five, but we know that the... E is in the right position, all right? Let's try to get through this really fast. Lots of words with the E in that last position, uh, but it does not in contain an A-G-I or an L. No A or I, huh? Okay. What do we got then? Um, ooh, okay. Um, how about an S P? Ooh. Um, spoke. Sp oh, how about spoke? How about spoke? Spoke, is that a good one? What do we think? Oh, there's an S, there's an O. They're not in the right positions, but they're in the word, okay? I'd like to get this by like the third or fourth word if we could. Play along. Hey, give me your suggestions in the chat if you're watching us do a little wordle right now. So it definitely has an S and an O and the E is still in the right position. So, ooh, it's an S is not at the beginning. So then let's think about... Uh, what maybe has an S at the at like a second letter perhaps that has an S, um, S-E, something something S-E, stole. Ooh, somebody said stole, but that has the S at the beginning. This S actually does not belong there, so not store. This S goes either here or here, right? Somebody said those. That's a great, that's a great suggestion. Ooh, let's try those. Let's work together as a team. This is all building our soft skills as designers because we're collaborating right now. Um, T-H-O-S-E. I like those is not it, but the S is in the right position. Yeah, so we knew the O wasn't there. That's okay. We took a, we took a flyer. Um, okay, so now we're looking at O is not there. So then it has to be like something O something s e m o m o u s e m o u s e is that it house h o u s e h o moose yeah i was gonna say moose maybe or maybe it's uh oh, but there's no h so it has to be m for some reason i'm freezing up right now oh no oh no oh no why are we freezing world what's happening why are you doing this to me don't do it to me. Don't do it to me. Oh no, my wordle froze. Technical difficulties. I, I like horse as well. We're gonna try to refresh and hopefully we keep... Yes, yes, yes. Can we continue from where we left off? Yes. I like H O R S E. I like horse. Okay, so now we have the O in the right position. Dang it. Okay, now, but there's no H. There's no H. Uh, M... I mean, somebody said pause. Now you're screwing me up. No, it's not pause because there's no A there. There's a, it's something M O. Do we try U? We haven't tried U S E. Is that mouse, moose, mouse, mouse? Oh, what? what is it? I'm so bad at this. It's not an H. Uh, is it? Is it? 
Oh gosh, why am I? What? Wouse, Zaus, Kaus, Baus, Blouse? No, Jouse, Youse, Faus, Faus? It's not Faus. That's not a word, is it? Youse, Jouse, Naus, Baus, Vaus, Kaus. Is that this is gonna be some word I've never heard of? Oh, somebody said Rouse because it's not Aus. It's R O. -E. Is it Rouse? Is it Ra? Do we try an R? We don't know if it's an R. It's the R. Is it the R? I'm gonna try it. Let's try it. Hey, we got it. Come on, hit the confetti. Now we're talking. Hey, fam, we're doing a good job here. Just call, this is the second time we played Wordle. We've got it. Two out of two. We're doing good as a team. You guys are my my just killing it right now. Let's take it. Uh, we're done with Wordle. Let's take a time and look at uh, somebody that's kind of new on the block when it comes to portfolios as well as job boards and that's contra um they're officially launching i think this week or next week um and thanks for playing wordle with me thanks for <laughs> i just like to have a little friday fun contra is kind of interesting right because contra is kind of like supposed to be this all-in-one kind of like workspace because as a freelancer looking to get hired you're supposed to be able to get hired and actually bill manage all your projects and everything like right here so uh it's kind of an interesting idea i think also yeah, tell me tell me this tell me this it's commission free too so the way it should be so if you earn you know one hundred thousand dollars a year it's saying with contra you lose zero dollars because they're not going to take a portion the commission of you getting hired or getting the job there's probably still that, that is that true though because there's probably still some sort of processing fee it's got to be processing through stripe or an online payment processor so you're gonna lose that portion i would imagine but you're not gonna take get the extra piece taken off the top like you would if you were working on like a fiverr or an upwork kind of thing you're not gonna get that so keep that in mind okay but it's got a pretty cool thing where you can set up your portfolios um, and then you're kind of like locked into all of like the talent. So kind of interesting. So let's take a look quickly at some jobs. Now, here's what I have noticed. Let's go over to uh, design here. I have noticed that some of the prices feel a bit low on Contra, like people that are looking on Contra are going like, hey, give me a Figma mobile design for 250 bucks. Like 200, 250 bucks? To me, that feels low. Like here's a website design, like for 10 to 20K, that sounds legit, right? Like that sounds like a legit project with a legit time frame, one to three months. Totally love that. Um, you know, but a, okay, yeah, like these are interesting. Uh, I'll tell you what, let's do this. Let's look at this website design because this is definitely a, like a freelance gig, I think. Um, so let's just bring this in, shall we? So we can kind of look at it. Actually, let me move myself over to the other side. That's that's just so much easier. And here's what we got. It's uh, We're searching for an expert that will lead the website um, and development. It's a B2B company. I like that. Okay. Our current website is this. So we can go look at it. That's all they give you. Interesting. So, okay. So we could share this opportunity. We could apply for it. Uh, they are saying specifically they'd like it to be built in Framer. Now, this is actually good news because one of the problems that I see is that on Contra, some a, a lot of people are asking for Framer sites which framers like really, really cool. Um, and it's kind of like the new fun kid on the block. Everybody wants to play with them. But uh, this price point is not what I'm seeing a lot for framer sites, right? I'm seeing a lot of $500 framer sites, $1,000 framer sites. Um, you know, like let's keep cruising, let's keep cruising. Like website designs, look 500 to 1,000. Uh, graph design implementation, 500 to 1,000. That's like a sweet spot for some reason on Contra. I don't know why. Uh, was that Reddit who was trying to hire somebody? That's super interesting. Can we get back to that? Interesting. Okay. Uh, website designs. Okay. The, uh, I might be wrong. Look, we're getting some decent like price points for some projects. Graphic designer. Okay. Um, you know, maybe, maybe I'm super wrong and I'm, 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 I'm speaking from the wrong side of my body. Um, so, you know, but I don't like this price point for a lot of stuff. So I'm not, that doesn't really pump me up, but let's look at the portfolio stuff that's happening over here. A lot of beautiful work, uh, that we see. Let's look for 
Uh, let's, I tell you what, let's do this. Let's look for Framer. Somebody who's designing stuff in Framer. Oh, look, there's some sort of partnership going on between Framer Expert Program. Interesting. Okay, so we have people who are building websites in Framer. Let's just say 100 to 150 an hour. They're given an hourly rate. Okay, interesting stuff. Let's go for somebody who looks like they might be able to design my project. Let's let's just go with this guy. Let's see what he's got. Who is he? Uh, this is Adriano Res, uh, Contra Project OS. This is now we're kind of looking at like we can click and look at his entire portfolio. We went directly to a Contra Project, but this here's what's really, here's what's really cool. This portfolio is built directly from your Contra account. If you sign up. Uh, and become like a Contra Pro member, I believe. Uh, you get to immediately take that project work and it gets outputted into this really beautiful like portfolio piece, right? So, um, and again, you don't have to battle the, you don't have to battle the technology. It's gonna build it for you. Now, Behance has this as well. Uh, if you create a Behance, I think it's a Behance Pro account, you immediately get Adobe Portfolio. So, but this is a nice look and feel. Framer website development project, um, projects. Okay, so this is like all the different things he's done in Contra, or excuse me, in Framer. We can click on them individually. Uh, and we actually get taken to some sort of page. How did I get here? This is the Contra Project OS landing page. Okay, let's look at a different one that doesn't have to do with Contra. Leora, this is something apparently that was built in Framer. Wow, look at that, that's a fun <laughs> animation. I like that a lot. And uh, yeah, cool. It's clean. It's nice. You know, I like it. It's fun. It's got some little movement and wiggle and animation in it. It looks good. You know, I'm into it. Um, so, you know, we would definitely get click service details one to two weeks product designer. Yep. Up, 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 up. Absolutely. Okay. So, you know, do, does this match up? I think Contra does a really good job. I think probably because they have these partnerships. Um, Oh, uh, Jessica says, I would love to become a framer expert, but it's hard to find jobs to do to accomplish that. Maybe I'm just looking in the wrong places though. Maybe, perhaps. Um, again, like there's always going to be a bit of a gold rush feeling when you have some sort of new kid on the block tool. Like, you know, immediately like when framer really kind of like hit that mark where it was like the new cool tool, everybody all of a sudden became like framer des or excuse me, like a uh, Figma designers. Figma was listed in their portfolio when Webflow kind of like hit the market. It was like, I can design you websites in Webflow. And I don't know how I feel about that. Um, because in my opinion, there, there's going to be, there's different types of clients. There may be some clients that are looking specifically for a a specific type of platform, right? Like, hey, we're looking for a WordPress designer. Hey, we're looking for somebody to help us develop a site in Framer or Webflow, maybe. But a lot of clients don't care about the technology. What they care about is the value, right? So I have a lot of, I, I have certain tools I use. I like Framer, I like Webflow. I use both those tools right now to build websites. And when I have a client that comes to me, I have clients that come to me and say, hey, we're looking for a WordPress site. What they're really looking for, most likely 99% of the time, is some sort of content management system they can update on their own, but they just know WordPress from the past, right? So, um, you know, I would, I, I'd keep that in mind. There are some clients that are looking for particular tech stacks and there are others that are not looking for that. They're just looking for functionality, but the only way for them to describe it is through the lens of perhaps what they've heard about a particular tech stack. So, you know, you might have somebody say, we're looking for a framer website. And you go, I don't do framer websites. I do Webflow stuff. Sell them Webflow. <laughs> it's, you know, sell them the functionality, sell them the, the value, not the platform. That would be my recommendation. Uh, NXZA asks, which is better and easier to use, Webflow or Framer? I'll tell you, there's a couple of platforms I really like right now um, that I recommend. I'm gonna recommend these three platforms to build websites all day long. And that is Editor X. I'm still very much a fan. Like Wix has done a fabulous job with that platform. It is absolutely kicking butt and taking names. Super easy to use, drag and drop. Uh, the visual editor, flawless. The outcome of it, beautiful, ties right in to all the things you need, e-commerce and blah, blah, all that stuff is great. Webflow, in my opinion, is like equally amazing. Your ability to create really complex things. They have logic now, you can build protected like spaces and backend pieces so users can log. You can build, like you don't even need Bubble anymore. If you wanna build a web app, you could do it inside of Webflow. And Framer I think is amazing because it feels like you're designing in Figma. Whereas the others feel like you have to kind of learn a little bit of this 
uh, this interface. There's a little bit of a learning curve. I would say that Framer has the easiest learning curve. I would say Editor X has the second easiest and Webflow has the maybe hardest learning curve of them all. But I would say for me, like all of them have their kind of benefits. So like just because the learning curve is easier on one, um, it uh, doesn't mean it's necessarily the best tool. So like the learning curve on Framer right now is super duper easy in my opinion, but that's the learning curve to get to basic proficiency. If you want to start creating really, really cool stuff in Framer, you're going to have to learn how to hack some stuff and, and you know, and that's a, le that's a new learning curve. So, um, you know, whereas like, the learning curves for the other tools are maybe a little bit more of a slow burn, but you really start getting advanced pretty quickly. So that's what I would say there. But I love those three tools. If you use any of those three, good on you. I think they're fan stinking fantastic for building websites in 2023 and beyond okay um all right fantastic hey this is super great hey if you uh i like all these questions if you want to ask more questions like this hey consider becoming a design champion that is my exclusive design community we had we just hit 100 plus members uh we have multiple live events every month i answer like like questions like this uh, and actually engage with my community so much so if you want to engage with me a lot more that's the place to do it it's like cost of like a cup of coffee every month to be a part of it and you can it's a place to really be equipped and trained and sharpened with your peers and with mentors like me and we have a lot of really cool plans for the community as it moves forward if you're not into that uh, and you just want some place to train again consider my 30-day ui design immersive program it's not a course it is a journey a 30-day program for you to learn everything you need to know about ui designer not great for established ui designers but great for those of you who are still in those immature levels of UI design or transitioning from another place of design like graphic or web design. So it would be fantastic. Become an early backer. You get all sorts of goodies and discounted rate. Check those things out. Hey, that's it for the day. Thank you so much for taking the time and being a part of the live stream. Love you guys to death. Had a lot of fun on this Friday playing Wordle with you. We will see you next week. We'll talk more about web design, UI design, UX design, no code, and all of the rest of the stuff. Have a fantastic Friday and weekend, and we'll see you next week.